Regarding high arches have long been believed to be a major risk factor for injury because they are thought to be very rigid and create a stiffer foot, making it harder for the arch to dissipate impact evenly over the foot. One of the many important roles of the arch in running is to help absorb impact but evidently higher arches are thought to be very poor shock absorbers, which is why runners with high arches are often recommended to run in thickly cushioned running shoes to try and minimize impact. But most consequential, this is the wrong advice because the thicker the shoe, the harder the foot plows into the ground, generating more downward force also, the majority of the studies on arch height and running injuries mainly involved heel strike runners, and we know that the evidence is clear that heel strike running is the most force intensive style of running that a lot of injuries stem from. To that point, reasons why heel strike running doesn't sustain safely for any runner, but especially for runners with high arches, is that a 2012 study in the journal The Foot, which is linked down below this video in the description box, along with all of the other studies referenced in this video, the study found that heel strike runners with high arches produced more impact at touchdown and at toe off, rendering both the heel and the forefoot to be common sites of stress-related injury. Similar research in the journal Foot and Ankle Surgery discovered that increased ankle dorsiflexion at heel strike, which means the forefoot lifts up in order to heel strike, this specific action of the foot increased maximum elevation of the arch beyond tolerance, suggesting that the repetitive forefoot lifting to allow heel strike may actually cause the development of abnormally high arches, which is a very interesting finding because it may have just revealed that the main cause of high, rigid, painful arches is actually heel striking when you run, Worse still, heel strike running may impair the shock absorbing properties of the arch altogether because the arch compression that is needed for impact absorption is impaired when the body weight travels heel to toe, causing the arch to fully deform under the body weight and the heavy burst and collisional impact that is always produced at heel strike cannot be absorbed by the arch because of the high rate of deformation. Essentially, it makes the arch an ineffectual shock absorber, resulting in higher initial loading rates and peak impact during stance, all of which is highly injurious for you. But running doesn't have to be rough and tumble for runners with high arches because one of the many fundamental distinctions between heel strike running and forefoot strike running is that forefoot running engages the arch in a completely different way and in a more functional, more useful manner than in heel strike running. As it turns out, forefoot running naturally engages more arch compression, which improves the shock absorbing characteristics of the arch. This is because when you land with a forefoot strike, the arch undergoes three point bending. The functional advantage of this is it prevents arch deformation and instead increases arch compression, which is what the arch needs to do to absorb impact when running. The biggest takeaway is it's the three point bend of the arch engaged only in four foot running that makes the arch work better as a shock absorber, regardless of arch height which is another compelling piece of information in that regardless of arch height, if you land with a forefoot strike when you run, it still makes the arch more functionally useful and attenuating shock without the added risk of injury, even if you have higher arches, because the high rates of deformation isn't there like it is when you land with a heel strike, whereas the movement path of the foot is completely different in forefoot running, which is why the arch is engaged differently. Also indicating another major advantage to add to forefoot running is it's the best way to get the arch to work more effectively, not just as a shock absorber, but as an energy saving spring, which was found to help spring the foot up with greater ease with less muscular effort. Whereas the arch deformation that occurs in heel strike running makes inefficient use of the spring properties of the arch also. And the video that I did on just that is also linked down below this video in the description box. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already. 
where you stay more informed on forefoot strike running versus heel strike running, as well as how running barefoot can actually make you run much better in shoes. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.